Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and in today's video we are going to talk about the first couple of days of the Race to World First, and also of just the Mythic Week, Heroic Week, now that they're all smashed together. Uh, so this is December 12th or 13th or 14th or whatever, uh, whenever we are going to have Mythic Raid, Heroic Raid, Normal Raid, Mythic Plus, and Raided PvP all open up all at the same time. Uh, just sort of, I want to make this video to set some expectations of what we might see there and make some predictions as well about what we might see there uh, because all of the top guilds are keeping it secret what their plans are. Uh, so none of this information is based on anything from any of them. This is all just my guesses based on publicly available uh, information. And uh, I will try and include guesses about how I feel most you know different types of guilds will work all the way down from race to world first, uh, down to world top hundred, down to world top thousand, down to like a heroic rating guild even how the how the start will feel compared to heroic weeks of some of the previous tiers we had in Shadowlands. Uh, again, just educated guesses that could be hugely wrong uh, and often in the past have been hugely wrong uh, and completely subverted by the difficulty of whatever raid actually comes out being very different than what we expected. But what you're looking at right here is the item level chart of the content that opens up all at the same time on that week. Uh, so you, up until this point, 372 is the item level of M0s, of Mythic Zero Dungeons, which can be farmed for two resets before this starts up. Uh, actually, if you look on the live dungeon journal, it says 382 out of M0s. But if you look on beta, it says 372, which would line up with this chart. So potentially that's you know, not locked in stone yet. Maybe the 382 is actually accurate. Maybe they're changing these numbers, squishing it down somewhat. But assuming that the beta numbers and the chart here is accurate, uh, that means that the gap between a player who's in that full 372 M0 gear and the early Mythic bosses that dropped 415 gear uh, is tremendous. That is the, That would be a huge gulf of item levels which means almost certainly the first few days for every single guild that has aspirations to do mythic content will not be spent fighting that mythic content unless the bosses are criminally undertuned to the point where, you know, if you can kill them while your whole raid is 372, then by the time you actually have like 398 gear from high, from the end of the normal raid, right? Uh, then the bosses would be falling over like uh, being cut through like a hot knife through butter, right? So... Probably you will need to gather some gear before you can challenge the mythic bosses, and potentially you might need to gather some gear even in in really good guilds before you can gather before you can fight the heroic bosses. Because heroic drops 402 from the early bosses, you will still be 30 item levels behind that. Uh, so it may even be a case of only the very tippy top guilds are able to actually uh, easily kill the harder heroic bosses before they've actually gathered a bunch of gear. But if you look at the dungeon level table over here, this is also, you know, unless you slowly climb this ladder and you make these steps, if you're trying to jump in and turbo boost your key uh, and you're trying to go like three chest the two, three chest the five, three chest the eight, that sort of thing, I mean, pretty quickly you're going to start getting to content that is rewarding 398 end of dungeon uh, if you're trying to do 15s uh, and still being, you know, more than 20 item levels below that content. On beta right now, we are scaled... I believe to either 392 or 389, and the 15s are, I would say, pretty challenging for good groups. Uh, not impossible, certainly they're timeable, uh, but they're pretty tough. They're the kind of things where it's like, you know, these are players that are getting the, t the hero titles end of season uh, pretty reliably and are not timing every key they enter. So for most players, for, for most of us, uh, that's going to be pretty tough to accomplish these keys until you get your gear up pretty close to the level that they reward. Um, so all of this is to be is saying, I think that the first few days of that first reset for almost everybody are going to involve scrapping out a bunch of smaller upgrades from different places. Uh, and then for the Race World First guilds, it is going to be a question of how soon can they get themselves into Heroic Raid uh, and how efficiently are they going to be able to set up splits of heroic uh, and i know the word splits if you if you either watch race to world first that may make you sad and if you don't you don't if you haven't heard the word splits before but you're kind of new to potentially watching the race to world first uh then it will make you sad to hear what they are which is so split raids are when you take your raid 
And instead of running heroic as all of your main characters, you instead run a heroic with some main characters and some alts. And that lets you trade the gear from your alts to your mains. That was how you would do it in Shadowlands and in BFA with personal loot. You don't need to jump through as many hoops in the world of Dragonflight with group loot you because you don't have to trade anymore. You literally can just assign the loot to your mains. So the way that this will work in Dragonflight, I suspect, is you are going to see 30-person heroic raids that have four characters, one of each armor type, that are like mains, and then maybe a couple of characters that are like main alts that are fairly high priority for loot, but not super high, right? Like somebody's second character that they might use on a fight uh, or something like that. And then the rest will just be people's alts. And you're just there killing bosses, trying to get as much loot to drop as possible to maximize the chances uh, of items dropping. And then you are assigning all of that, all the cloth items to the cloth main, unless it's a slot they already have a good piece on. And then you're assigning it to like the cloth main alt that is in that raid. Uh, and going down the list that way, right? So there, there's a cloth character that's soaking all the cloth, a uh, leather, a male, a plate. Race to World First Guilds, it's going to be a very interesting arms race. And depending on the tuning of Heroic, it's going to be a question of, can they go in there and do this with a raid of all their own characters on Tuesday slash Wednesday? Or do they need to actually wait and collect gear from other sources first before this is possible? Uh, and follow-up question is it going to be possible to do it with helpers? Is it going to be possible to run a raid of 15 players from your Race to World First guild and 15 strong players that aren't in the guild but that are down to help you out and maybe are getting 500k each or uh, they're getting a carry after the tier is done? Of some, there, There's some kind of uh, deal like that set up where they help you by filling out your raid, meaning that more items are dropping. But then if you do that, you get to run two splits at once. And in theory, you could run, I mean, if Heroic is easy, then what you could do is you could just literally have seven splits running at once, right? Everybody could be, everybody in your raid could be on a main character in a different split with 26 helpers all funneling them gear, basically. Uh, and in theory, that's the most efficient thing to do. But that is complicated by the fact that this Heroic experience at 402 item level being rewarded by the low heroic bosses right and 408 and 411 by the later ones is likely to be like if you remember castle nathria when we did heroic castle nathria uh that was pretty tough and we were closer in item level to the rewards of that raid than we, we were like 10 item levels closer or 15 item levels closer than we will be if we attempt heroic at item level 372 uh, on average so that is going to be a huge question mark um but I do think that Raid is going to be the place that the Race to World First guilds look at in particular, because I don't think that climbing this ladder of M+, and trying to farm gear from the high keys is going to be particularly appealing. Uh, I, I just think that that's going to be less time efficient than going into the Raid, and you don't get the benefit of getting as much tier, which is another huge thing that, especially with group loot, you can have a pretty good chance of getting two-piece and four-piece on your important characters uh, by trading those items to them. Uh, so I think that, I do think the Race to World First guilds in particular are going to do very serious split rating, uh, and it's going to be hugely important just how hard Heroic is, uh, whether that's something that's possible. And honestly, the Race to World First might be won or lost based off of how efficient and how well the guilds play at doing the split rating. Another factor that might matter is just does four-piece drop for the players that need it, because much as you can try and stack the raid with a bunch of traders, there's just a chance that the, you know, the mystic token doesn't drop from three bosses, and all of a sudden your your mystic main in that raid doesn't have four-piece. You can try and mitigate this by having them have two characters ready, or three characters, or four characters ready of the same class, uh, and then running a split for each of them, and uh, hoping that in one of the splits they get their four-piece. That was basically what we saw happen in Sepulchre, uh, but with trading instead of group loot. So the chances are better here, but the time investment is also more dangerous because unlike Shadowlands and BFA Race to World Firsts, you don't have this heroic week where any of the time you spend doing splits is fine. Any time you spend doing splits here is a time where a more efficient guild, if they can do those splits faster, they can get into Mythic faster uh, and they can start killing those Mythic bosses, which is going to be, I think, a really interesting dynamic. I think that... Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting from a meta level, but the problem is that for the Race to World First, it does mean the first few days are very likely to be extremely splits-oriented, and seeing the cool new Mythic bosses is pretty likely to be something that you don't see 
during the race to world first until thursday friday saturday type things uh is my that is my guess of how that will work out because it'll just be so much more efficient to farm the gear first and then challenge the mythic bosses so uh, it's good news for any guilds that like if you're kind of like a not a race to world first guild but kind of close and you decide to instead pull the trigger and get into mythic sooner probably can get a lot of viewers if you're if you're doing like mythic prog on the fourth boss and echo and liquid are still doing heroic splits uh probably can get a lot of viewers that way so something for guilds to consider if they are uh viewer motivated but the problem is there's no guilds that are viewer motivated every guild is winning motivated uh and it, you'd be hurting your chances of killing the end boss as soon as possible to do that so uh only a couple of guilds will likely be interested in doing something like that um and yeah, basically the problem is Heroic Week used to be five to seven days, you know, five, maybe you'd only play actually five days of like degen splits and stuff, but that would all happen off camera. Now all of that splits and gearing is going to, is going to be on camera during the race to world first because it's the same week that Mythic comes out. So yeah, uh, I, I still don't really know what to think of this. I, I think it's going to make the race to world first less exciting to watch those first few days at least but it'll be kind of more interesting for me personally because like for me you know how efficient are the are is this guild at splits is like actually kind of cool interesting question and uh, it'll be an interesting thing to see the decisions that are being made there but i don't know i actually i do think that the race to world first would probably be better if all the splits happened off camera or as much as possible happened off camera uh, and then you know the mythic week came out and you're just seeing the guilds jumping straight into that with uh with sufficient gear to to make progress um now when we're talking about below the race to world first level the idea of having a bunch of alts to run splits becomes less appealing because you know running heroic splits right you're able to get yourself this 408 411 gear and potentially the super rare drops that are six to seven eye levels higher which is a feature of vault of the incarnates uh is that some bosses drop you know a special ring that has a special effect and is higher item level as well um so Getting access to those sorts of things, you know, it's compelling and it's better than you can get end of dungeon and M plus by substantial item levels, even than the plus 20 keys. But if you can run plus 20 keys, if you're in a if you're in a guild that's like world 50 to world 10, somewhere in that range, potentially you're able to get 20s done during this week, you know, 15s potentially at least. Uh, and so for those sorts of guilds. Running splits might not actually be something that is as good a use of time as just spamming keys, right? Spamming 15s, getting your 398s, because uh, running splits is extremely annoying, hard, requires a lot of time commitment from a lot of people to get all of their characters ready, right? You're talking about basically full-time job levels of World of Warcraft playing to have all, enough characters ready to run enough splits to get huge value out of it. Uh, and also, especially the bringing in helpers from outside your raid is something that only raced World First guilds and... Not even all guilds that try to race to world first can reasonably fill up all the helpers they need in their raids. It's a common problem for uh, guilds that aren't Echo and Liquid to compete with Echo and Liquid is actually filling their helper slots in a, in a timely fashion. So if you don't have access to those tools, all of a sudden it gets a lot less compelling to try and do more than just one run of heroic uh, or maybe two and getting your gear out of that. Uh, and then spending the rest of the extra week actually getting yourself set up you know, again, you're coming into the week with 372, so getting 398, getting 402 out of some dungeons, out spamming those, uh, getting yourself a full set from uh, doing that is especially compelling, especially for guilds that are not raiding 16 hours a day, because, you know, if your guild raids four hours a night, it's likely that during the first few weeks, many, if not all of your players will have more time to play the game, just not at the same time as each other, right? Like, uh, you know, somebody will, you, your raid time is say 6 to 10 p.m., right? Uh, and then some people in your guild are degens that stay up late at night and uh, will play keys after raids. Some people can play keys before raids. Some people can do some keys when they wake up in the morning, right? Uh, before they go to work, that kind of stuff. So even though, you know, you're not all online at the same time, everybody will have extra time that they can use to go into keys and collect the gear that way. So I think that will be a much more common factor for guilds below that race to world first level is, is you will see a lot of gear spammed in the first couple of weeks from keys getting themselves sort of a a reasonable baseline setup and then it'll be i'm wearing heroic pieces where they happened to drop for me and i got lucky and the rest of my gear is filled out with this m plus gear that is 398 or or better uh and 
Yeah, the downside there is that the tier, you're going to have a lot less tier split among your raiders if you are not doing splits. That is the best part about doing splits, is that if you go from doing one heroic split to doing two heroic splits, you will basically double the amount of tier pieces that drop uh, for your raid. You can, I think, still get tier from your Great Vault, so you'll still get some uh, extra, so it's not it's not quite a doubling, but it is pretty close to doubling the amount of tier, which was not true in Sepulchre. In Sepulchre, going from one split to two splits multiplied the amount of tier on your mains by like 1.1 or 1.2 times uh, because you had to get it to drop on an alt twice before they could trade it to your main. But now you will be able to assign every single piece of tier that drops to a main character. Uh, if you're running, you know, one, two or three splits, you only start to run into diminishing returns where you can maybe get unlucky and have a piece of tier drop that can't even go to a main as you start adding a fourth or fifth split, which is a very rare thing to do. So that incentive is going to create a lot of tension. Uh, guilds are going to have a hard choice between the splits versus the not splits if they are in, again, that we're talking about this world 10 to world 50 range, which is still an extremely elite and small set of guilds, uh, but an interesting one. As you get below that, I think you get more and more to the place of not everybody in in guilds, you know, in a guild that is ranked between world 100 and world 1000, the difference between your geardest players and your not geardest players gets much larger because you have some people in those guilds that do play the game a lot, and then you have some people in those guilds that do play the game during raid time only, right? Uh, and that is a constant source of frustration for guilds such as that. Uh, and an especially common complaint that I, I foresee coming is, okay, I spent the first two weeks in keys. I, got, I was able to get up to 20 keys. My character's in item level 405 gear. This other person didn't do very many keys at all. They're still in 382 gear, which means that when we do heroic and a 411 piece drops, it is a much bigger upgrade for them. So because I did all these keys, I'm getting punished and I don't get these items. Uh, I expect that that is going to be a common storyline that you'll hear about uh, in guilds in this range. Um, I don't really want to weigh in on either side here. I, th I think it's a problem of like expectations not being well set in, in those guilds, but uh that i think is going to be an extremely common dynamic that we will see with this but uh, i do expect still that for players that that can log into the game a lot outside of raid there's going to be a lot of value in in farming these keys and and getting this item level to bring you up 30 item levels from the m0 uh, and let you kind of jump start your way into getting into heroic uh, and then, yeah, the guilds that are heroic progression guilds, I think, will find themselves in the first few weeks, especially like if you're a guild that doesn't have play has players that don't really have an interest in like pushing keys and timing 15s, right? Like if you're in a guild where M plus for your guild means sixes, sevens, eights, that kind of stuff, uh, and you know you're trying to clear heroic in in a guild like that, I expect you're going to be finding yourself like challenged by normal difficulty raids for the first few weeks and getting into heroic difficulty raids maybe six weeks into the raid being open as the creation catalyst opens, as you're able to start catalyzing tier for your characters, which is not something that will be relevant for progression for those higher end guilds, right? The creation catalyst, effectively not an important, not a system that matters at all for world top hundred guilds, unless the race goes turbo long again, unless the raid stays alive for as many weeks as it did uh, for Sepulchre, which my prediction is that once you are sufficiently geared, right, once you have your characters up to that 410 item level, uh, I don't think the Mythic Raids will be that hard compared to how hard, you know, Jailer was at a comparable item level uh, to what Jailer dropped, but we'll see. That I think Sepulchre was a huge outlier in that direction. I think Blizzard are going to try and not land on that side of things again, but... There's basically... I mean, this is just an educated guess. That a lot of people are saying the same thing that I just said, and... None of us know for sure how Blizzard is going to land on this. Uh, could miss hugely in either direction. So uh, there is only one way to find out what that will actually end up being. We'll just have to see when we get there. Anyways, I hope this video was interesting. That was the main thing uh, it was trying to be. Let me know if you disagree with any of the conclusions or assumptions that I've made uh, down in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you're excited still to watch The Race to World first or if you, uh, I don't know, uh, splits... It's tough because the only thing that is worse than splits is every single idea I've ever heard to get rid of splits. So I don't know. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.